Hey there and welcome. My name is Carlos Barris and let's start talking about what has been going on in the indie tabletop RPG scene. And as always, I am not being directly sponsored by anyone mentioned here unless explicitly said otherwise. And you can find all the links in the description together with some timestamps if you want to jump to a subject of your choice. Okay, and we are starting by a submission to the Generator Jam, which is a jam that just finished focusing on creating random tables, random generators actually, that can be used in tabletop RPGs. Usually they are random tables, but sometimes they can also be some pieces of software that they give some idea for you to spark your imagination and then you can create creatures, uh, rumors, missions, characters, countries, planets, whatever. This submission that I'm bringing to you is by Ivan Colucci, a member of the RPG Latam scene which is the Latin American tabletop RPG scene, and his submission is Life in the Valley, which is a generator for everyday tasks. It is focused for small towns and packet spaces where adventurers might be a little bit idle or even bored, and they want to fill this time and this void. It is a leaflet format game with three random tables that bring some missions and some ideas that you can then present to your adventurers and see if they just might want to take it. And it is available as pay what you want on each right now. I really enjoyed this idea of having small tasks and missions because it brings a little bit difference from the regular just epic great in grandiose missions and campaigns. So it's a breath of fresh air. And also recently published we have Dualist by Double Proficiency. Dualist is a supplement, or as they call it actually in Double Proficiency, an add-on to be used in tandem with other combat systems to try and change the I hit it to a more nuanced way of playing combat, allowing the characters more room to express themselves in combat. It has moves, stances and some other tools that can try to spice up the whole combat phase and being it in different tabletop RPG systems. No problem at all. Right now also we have a game based on the Acclaimed and one of my personal favorite systems that is Laser and Feelings. This one is Cowpokes and Spy Folks that was released by Mark Shepard. It was released as part of a gem called the Tom Lehrer gem and Cowpokes and Spy Folks are a system that you use the players as scientists in the 1950s, working in particle physics, quantum engineering, and atomic energy, this kind of things. And it all happens in New Mexico with a known spy background, since everyone in the Los Alamos Labs region is a little bit of a spy. A pretty intriguing premise, if you ask me. And about the gem itself, the Tom Lehrer gem, you have a bit less than a week to participate in, in it, uh, but it is to create games using the lyrics and music from Tom Lehrer, the mathematician and musician that recently made some a lot of their work available to free use. The text about it, the actual official statement from Tom Lehrer about this body of work that can be used is on the jam description so that you can more you can be more at ease in using it. And I will remember you of another gem. This kind of gem is actually Lumen Gem. It is still going on for a bit less than a week as well. It is for creators to make content and games using the Lumen SRD by Spencer Gillis RPG Campbell. There are already around 40 games that were released for this gem and you can check them out even if you're not Thinking about publishing a game using the Lumen SRD, you can perhaps see one of the games on, or one of the materials that uses it and just sparks your imagination on this, or strikes your fancy and you can check it out. Usually, SRDs, they are more in a way of rules and a skeleton. The Lumen SRD, as I talked with Spencer Campbell before, is more on the feeling that you want to give to the game. So it's also a nice SRD to give a look and see how they can be different. SRD, for anyone that is not uh, aware of, is 
system reference document. Okay, so you can check it out. And last, but certainly not least, you probably are familiar with the name TSR. Uh, the original company actually owned the biggest dragon game in the beginning. I guess they were the original owners. After its demise some time ago, not that short time ago, by the way, we have now two TSRs that are in the market. After the most recent TSR just showed up, they at first announced to be working with TSR games. That was already around for some time that they will work with the more recent one, actually, then they both would be working together. However, TSR Games, the older one, recently announced that they won't be working together with the more recent TSR anymore, after some racist and transphobic comments by one of the founders of the new TSR. You can get more background and a more in-depth analysis and chronology of what happened in the article by Chase Carter, which is nothing short of amazing as always. Chase Carter is always doing a very nice job for the indie tabletop community and scene. And I believe that's it for today. If you like the video, like the video, share, subscribe, you know how internet works. You can pay me a coffee if you want, you can check my games in HIO and I will see you all in my next video. So. See ya!